The elements of respiratory care delivered to patients of all ages should be evidence-based to the maximum extent possible. This, the first part of a two-part module, examines numerous research studies that have appeared in the peer-reviewed neonatal literature, both to provide you with useful models of the generation of clinical evidence, as well as to supply you with results that you can apply in your day-to-day -day NICU practice. We revisit the list of reference sources, such as the Cochrane Library and the Dynamed search engines that have served as a treasure trove of meta-analyses from which countless evidence-based strategies have been formulated in the past. The module proceeds to a discussion of statistical methods. Like all RCPs, therapists who are NICU trained need to be able to read and understand the peer-reviewed respiratory care medical, and nursing literature. Oftentimes, data presented in such monographs are configured as statistical measures of central tendency in the form of mean values and standard deviation, or SD, figures. The presentation continues with a discussion of Gaussian distributions and proceeds to develop a graphical approach to this topic. In this fashion, you might discover for the very first time that statistical methods can be lucid and intuitive, rather than abstruse and obscure. The lesson then explains the features of a crossover study design, the importance of a control group, and the meaning of the term double blind. The results of several actual studies are described in order to reveal the merits of nasal prongs versus a nasal mask for delivering oxygen to preemies, the study of Kieran et al. The incidence of pneumothorax in a cohort of patients in whom tidal volume was varied, the study of Valenki and co-workers. And the variable persistence of bronchopulmonary dysplastic lesions into adolescence, the meta-analysis of Goff and colleagues. The Goff paper describes a systematic literature review of seven databases, wherein 14 studies were identified, eight of which were of high quality and five of which were of moderate quality. Regrettably, these authors concluded that, quote, adult survivors of BPD have more impairment, which does not seem to diminish over time, unquote. Another monograph, published in Pediatrics in 2012, describes the work of Smalish and his colleagues who sought to determine lung function in very low birth weight, or VLBW, babies in their pulmonary function laboratory at the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Performing pulmonary function tests on infants who are unable to follow commands certainly represented an enormous challenge to these researchers but they created an extremely ingenious and completely effective method to determine the peak expiratory flow rate on 55 infants who, in addition to being of tender age, were sedated. By becoming aware of creative research techniques such as this, published in the neonatal and pediatric literature, you might find yourself in the position of informing the other members of the NICU team in your institution how you and they might successfully solve similar problems. The next report that is examined is one published in Pediatric Pulmonology in 2012 that was designed to determine whether or not high inspiratory pressures should serve as a deterrent to the placement of a tracheostomy. 22 patients were trached at a mean age of 177 days. The mean severity score of the infants one month post-trach was observed to be significantly lower, p-value 0.03, than their pre-trach scores. The authors conclude that, quote, high ventilatory pressures should not be a deterrent for placement of a tracheostomy, unquote. If this question ever comes up in your NICU, having navigated through this module will put you in a position to provide input from the peer-reviewed literature. 
The next paper included in the module was published in the Journal of Perinatology in 2012 and consists of a 10-year study of preemies, mean gestational age less than 29 weeks, in Canada. Surprisingly and sadly, the incidence of BPD among that population of neonates was actually observed to marginally increase. This suggests that the efforts that have been expended in Canada and the U.S. over recent years, consisting of rigorous control of inspired oxygen fractions and inspiratory pressures, might already have achieved an end point, and that the incidence of BPD may be as low now as it might ever be destined to be.